place, help me pray to your neighbor. Spiritual things can be known only experientially. It's just like the Holy Ghost. You cannot know the Holy Ghost just because you attended the theological school. And I am not trying to play down on theological knowledge because I acquired a few of it. I attended schools, Bible schools, theological classes. They say, okay, go do assignments. Say, all right, what is soteriology? You can finish that and get a distinction and not know the Holy Ghost because that's not how they, you, you know his spirit. You don't know. Oh, my. Are you still with me? All of you need to board Delta Airways to Lagos straight. By the time we get to Lagos, I will take you to some villages. You will see some people that are educated in the ways of darkness because of their experience with darkness, but they've never been to any school. Oh, you don't understand? I'm talking about education that is experientially based. That education is actually tapping into the economy of mystery. Things that human beings are not modified to be able to understand. But when spirit entities come, they can bring you that education because you understand how to relate with the spirit beings. You can enter into the economy of spiritual knowledge. Such knowledge, oh my. Are you there? So he says, eyes have not seen. He says, ears have not heard it. He said, neither has it occurred to the heart of man. And if you notice the, the organs, the organs mentioned are mentioned in ascending sequence of, of designing capacity. Your eyes only sustain binocular vision. You can only see 180 degrees from your side to your front. So you are as blind as you have eyes. Because you cannot see 180 degrees to your back. You can only see 180 degrees to your front. Except you want to join the birds that have their eyes here. <laughs> are, you, are you there? So even your sight has limitations. As powerful as your sight is, you cannot see behind you. But in your hearing, you know the ears are not located in the front like the eyes. They, they are located here. So you can, you can hear from 360 Degrees, meaning that your ears are deeper in information gathering than your eyes. Are you there? Then he now shows us the third organ. The third organ is the heart. And the heart is the seat of your imagination. It's the seat of your thought. And your imagination can take you to Los Angeles, just like my own took me to Canada many years ago. But when I went to apply for the visa... After six months of detaining my passport, they, they brought a no. On the, it was stamped no. Deny. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But in, in my imaginations, I, I trespassed the, the territory. So the Bible says that eyes have not seen. It says ears have not heard. Neither has it occurred. For the heart of man. As powerful as your heart is, you can imagine all kinds of things. It says... It says, even that your heart has not by any means strayed into the corridor of spiritual matters. It means if by any means you enter into the corridor where you can touch and experience spiritual things, it is because you were guided into that realm by a spirit being. Uh, you know, somebody in the congregation say, hey! he's trying to make us look small. I'm not trying to make you look small. I'm saying you are small. That's not <laughs> You are small. May the Lord give you understanding. Yeah. Only a spirit being can guide you into these matters. And that's why he says in the book of um, 1 Corinthians chapter. Meanwhile, meanwhile. It says we speak wisdom, the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So God hid his wisdom. He made his wisdom classified. He put a passcode on the deep things of the spirit. So they are, they are, not, they are not 
they are not accessible. They are not accessible. And the reason why he did that is so that, number one, you will not trivialize those things. If it is on the streets, you are likely to trivialize it. So he put a passcode on it and he named it classified. It's so classified that even the princes of this world have no knowledge of their existence. So there are things that are held up in the divine supernatural that demonic spirits and demonic intelligence, demonic data banks do not have knowledge of such things because demonic spirits are not modified to be able to tap into divine frequencies. You know, I told you yesterday, are you still with me? I said, if you bring a demonic spirit here, and the demonic spirit begins to unveil things in the realm under his, power, under his hand and under his power, the things you will see will be different from if the Holy Ghost comes here and begins to unveil the things under his power. For a spiritual man, the reality he knows is the reality that the spirit being he walks with has unveiled to him. If you find a witch, there are some realities they know. In the eyes of a witch, the whole world, nature is a temple. It's a temple that understands and responds to the instructions spoken under certain unctions. And that is the reason for incantation, to give commands to demons, to bend and to, to, to take advantage of the potential that is in nature, to use it as a weapon to fight. So a witch, if you know the accurate incantation to speak, you can give commandments to demons to make thunder become a weapon to use it to fight with a man. Oh, you are not with me. Oh, have you taken time to find out why the Bible calls Satan the prince of the power of the air? Oh, most of you are not aware of the fact that there is power in the air. And, okay. That is class, class 11. So, you can relate to it now. It, except we do, is class, class 11. Oh, you guys are not aware of the fact that when Job's children were killed, it was a wind that came. Ah. You are not aware that spirits ride on wind like a chariot. In, 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 in chapter 11, in the module, in, I will, we'll go into all those matters. So that you can look at someone. Are you there? Yeah, most of you don't have the eyes when you look at a person to tell if this person is blessed. It's because you don't know spiritual things. You don't also have the eyes to tell if the person you are looking at is cursed. Because you don't, you don't understand spiritual things. You can't tell. You can't tell who is blessed. You can't even tell if, if you are blessed. You, sitting. There, there, are a few, there is a knowledge we need to be able to survive in the end time. The Bible says that as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, that's how this truth is going to be withstood in the end time. And how did they withstand Moses? In the supernatural. So the context of ministry, the context of dominion has shifted into the theater of the supernatural. It is a man that understands the spirit he's working with that will have an edge. You are going for an interview. The only thing you, you have that is, is beautiful on you is your tie. Your insurance policy for the interview is the multicolored tie you are wearing. Meanwhile, someone else going for that interview, he has a bottle. There is a, a green snake in that bottle. He, he takes a shot out of the content of the bottle. And then he makes an incantation. All the people coming to supervise people, he has casted a spell on them. You came with your tie. That day, they will not notice it. <laughs> Please help me preach to your neighbor. Life is supernatural. <laughs> we speak the wisdom of God among them that are perfect. Yet not the wisdom of this world. Nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery. Even the hidden wisdom with God that's ordained for our glory. It is classified because God set it up 
to give us an advantage. The reason why the things are hidden, they are not hidden from you, but they are hidden for you. So that God can give you an advantage. And only spirits, only the Holy Ghost can access them. So if you decide not to befriend the Holy Ghost, you have decided to put yourself on the disadvantage. He said, these things are so classified that the princes of this world, they do not know it. And that's why the Bible is filled with the miscalculations of the devil. And the greatest, even in your life, that, how many of you, if you had an accident, a car accident this year, that you survived? Let me see your hand. Raise it. Okay, just wave. Now, can you see all these people? Okay, put your hand down. Do you think that the devil, it was just, he, what the devil wanted was to just dent that vehicle. He didn't want to dent the vehicle. He wanted you out. But you see, it did not happen. It means he, he miscalculated. He did not calculate properly. The Bible is full of the miscalculations of the devil because the devil does not understand this mystery. And one of the greatest miscalculations of the devil was to kill Jesus. They say, Car, if we take him out of the way, Mm. He just came and busted this witchcraft shrine. Busted the other coven. He sent some witches back in. We were trying to resist him, but his prayer was too powerful. Then the witch that said, okay, I'm going all the same. He died. Ah. He said, okay, this man, let's take him out. But they did not know that by killing him, they set him free. It was a wisdom that was superior to the capacity of the kingdom of darkness that was at work. For which Satan will regret every day. Because now he was trapped in a human body. But the moment he was killed, he became a life-giving spirit. And anyone that can say, Jesus is Lord, have mercy on me, he will possess him. And so you could not deal with one Jesus. But his spirit is in, is in millions and billions of people. And the destiny of every man that has the spirit of Jesus is to be conformed to the image, the very image of Jesus. So Satan will need to deal with a nightmare. A nightmare of a million Jesuses. And that's why the Bible says that the believers were first called little Christs in Antioch. So what the devil could not handle, he was irritated by the presence of Jesus. He would need to, <laughs> oh, if the princes of this world had known it, they would have allowed Jesus to grow old. I don't know how old he would have been now. It was a miscalculation. The reason was because the wisdom at work was so deep that the princes, in all their intelligence in darkness, did not know it. So if the princes of this world did not know it, how do you think you can know it with your mind that you used to study engineering? It's beyond you. So let me hit my point. It says, eyes have not seen it. It says, ears have not heard it. Neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But he has revealed it unto us by his spirit. You know, I told you that a spiritual thing is a reality that can only be revealed by a spirit being. Uh, I, I don't know if you, have you ever heard? No, I don't think that would be, this is the right place to make that terminology. Oh, well, well, okay, see. In Africa, there's something called a masquerade. No, there are, there, are many, there are many people that don't know. Okay, let me give you an Let me explain what a masquerade is. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a manifestation of the demonic art called necromancy. Are you there? Now, the philosophy of this culture is that the members of your family either dead or living are still members of your family and uh, the necromancy is a technology that has been discovered uh, that that promises to be able to connect living members of the family to 
dead members of the family. Is that, is, are, you, are you following my explanation? Okay. So, um, in some of the cultures where necromancy is practiced in this form, when maybe somebody dies in the family, the family members will be responsible for providing a certain kind of garment that is weaved after a certain prescription. All right? And then you give the garment to the priests. After one year, the priest will bring information that that's your relative that died. He has appeared. They have seen him in the island of the supernatural. Oh, Jesus Christ. And then there is a festival that they will hold, which they do once a year, where they release all the demons. So you will see the so-called spirits wearing those garments coming out. Then you'll be looking for the one your family gave them. Are you there? Oh, you are not interested in my discussion. Uh, so, uh, based on this, the fact that... Uh, you know, I told you, whenever you are not understanding my message, I protest. <laughs> are you there? Okay, so you'll find, you'll find um, the, the people with those garments will start coming out. Then you'll be waiting to... Meanwhile, you will, the one you will give the priest, you will make some designs on it so that you can identify it. Do you understand? Until you now see one of them will come out with, with that your garment. Huh? I say, oh, this is our father. This is our father. And to clear your doubt, because demons are involved. Imagine you, know, you knew that person before he died. If you greet the person, the person will speak with the voice of that person that you knew. Are you there? So I'm just giving you an idea. So there is one of those masquerades when he comes out and he looks at you, he can tell you your name, tell you your father's name, tell you your grandfather. Maybe you are lost. You don't know which family you come from. Don't worry. They will invoke the spirit. <laughs> they will invoke the spirit. And then the masquerade will come out and say, your name is this. You come from the family of this. You, your father's name is this. Your grandfather's name. Your great-grandfather's name. That's how renew, family re, re, reunions will take place. <laughs> By the authority and the revelation of, of a masquerade. And once upon a time, this lady, this little girl, full of fire of the Holy Spirit, she was evangelizing close to the place where that masquerade was operating. And the masquerade got angry and turned to her and tried to scan her and he could not scan her. You know why? None of the princes of this world knows this, that mystery. The masquerade cried out, who is this lady that I cannot see? And he tried! He didn't, he, the, 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 the demon walking with him did not attend Bible classes <laughs> because there are things that demonic spirits cannot peep into. He said, none of the princes of this world knows this mystery. For had they known it, they will not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Neither has he entered into the heart of a man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But he has revealed them unto us by his spirit. Why? Because the spirit searches all things. Yea, the deep things of God. I came to tell you that there's a search facility that is stronger than Google. A search facility that is stronger than Yahoo search. It is called spirit search. For the spirit searches all things. Oh my. Yea, the deep things of God. They are inexhaustible resources in the depths of God. And they are all available to us through the Holy Ghost. But we decide to walk in the flesh. We decide to walk in the flesh. I don't know if God will permit me. 
to tell you some of the encounters I've had. I don't know if God will permit me to tell you of the angel that stands by my right hand. Anytime he comes, he comes like 4 a.m. in the morning. I will never prophesy publicly until that angel comes. The moment that angel comes, I know that those things are already solved in heaven, settled in heaven. May you not be found prophesying on issues that have not been settled in heaven. <laughs> After the United States elections, a lot of prophets need to be explaining them, saying, no, <laughs> when I said yellow, I actually mean, meant purple. Oh. May the Lord give you understanding. May the Lord. Give you. God is not a talkative. He's not a talkative. They are hidden things. It's not for everybody. If you have not, if you have not been given the privilege to ride on the search facility of the spirit to see things, keep quiet. I saw someone on Facebook this afternoon. I just wanted trying seriously to explain why the prof the team failed. Why not just apologize and say, Oh, sorry, I, I missed it. You are you are creating more sin for, for yourself, and you are making yourself unfit to even see any other revelation. Come to the people and tell them, you know, we are all learning. <laughs> and you will bail <laughs> you. You will bail yourself <laughs> and you'll be honorable in their sight. You will still have the authority to prophesy tomorrow. Oh my God. You can't access it in the flesh. What it means is that you, you had no intercourse with the Holy Ghost. That's what it means. I never I didn't touch the Holy Ghost on this matter. Just apologize. May the Lord give you understanding. 